Hey guys, welcome to Commander Lounge. Uh, yes, this is um, a Zada Hedron Grinder uh, Commander deck tech. Uh, although it's not going to be like all the other ones, this one is... Um, I, I decided to build this because uh, I wanted to, to... I just wanted to build a deck and I was I was thinking... I was in the mood for building something and I was thinking, you know what, let's do a theme deck. Uh, and I'm trying to get... I've been trying to get other people to, uh, to build uh, this theme deck with me and it's called uh, the Dollar General theme. And that is you build a commander deck and every card in it has to be worth a uh, dollar or less. Um, I was even more evil in the beginning and I said it had to be Star City game prices. But then I was uh, convinced to uh, do uh, TCG, uh, TCG mid prices or TCG market prices. Uh, so we went with that. And I'm happy we went with that because I, I did get a lot more fun cards in this because of that. Uh, so yeah, this is my Dollar General Zada Hedron Grinder Commander deck tech. So... Um, I've, I've been wanting to build Zada for so long, and I'm, I'm so happy I finally got to. Um, it just seemed like the perfect opportunity to, because a lot of combat tricks... This deck needs combat tricks in it feels. It needs a lot of combat tricks, and the cool thing is, is that pretty much all, co all the combat tricks are under a dollar. So, um, I, I think every combat trick is under a dollar. I could be wrong. Uh, there might be a combat trick out there that's a dollar, but I don't know. But let's get into the stats. Uh, it's four mana for a 3-3 three, three Goblin Ally, and whenever you cast an instant or sorcery spell that targets only Zada, uh, copy that spell for each other creature you control that spell uh, could target. Uh, each copy targets a different one of those creatures. I know it kind of sounds confusing, but basically you make a couple creatures, put Zada out, you target Zada with a combat, uh, pretty much a combat trick, which is an instant, or, which is also an instant or sorcery, and it will copy for each creature on the battlefield. Then you uh, target those creatures. So it basically turns like a uh, if you give him plus three plus O and trample, you give him all plus three plus O and trample, and it turns into like a overrun effect, which is amazing for cheaper mana. Uh, so it's weird. It's like even though this is a mono red deck, uh, once the synergy becomes real, like it turns into like a teamer deck. Uh, like an aggro teamer deck because this deck uh, fulfills the needs of overrun effects and draw effects, which turns this deck kind of blue, uh, which is crazy. And it, it's insane because um, it really helps out the mono red version. If, if you do a mono red commander deck, you notice uh, card draw is always a problem and card advantage is a problem. And, you know, once you get this synergizing and, and you do you cast a uh, instant or sorcery combat trick that has a, that's a cantrip that can draw you a card and replace itself, it triggers on each creature. So you draw a card for each creature, essentially, which is absurd. But let's get into the deck. Um, okay, so next we have Zada 2.0, which is Mirrorwing Dragon, which is, it, you know, it's basically Zada as a dragon in a 4-5 flying form. But... Uh, the only difference is is that uh, whenever an opponent targets uh, Mirrorwing Dragon, the opponent has to copy that spell he targeted Mirrorwing with, and he has to target all of his creatures with that. I didn't know that when I first read this, and somebody explained it to me, and I was like, I, I can't wait till I build Zada one day, because this card's perfect with Zada. Uh, because not only does it copy your uh, combat tricks, but it also, if somebody like Doomblades this, they have to Doomblade their own creatures in response. So it's almost like you're wrathing their board for uh, them having to kill Marrowing Dragon. So I love that. Uh, it seems really good. Alright, next on is the Utility Land. Uh, Buried Ruins amazing because it gets artifact back, uh, artifacts back from the graveyard, and that is huge because artifacts usually help fulfill uh, the color that you're missing that you want to achieve in your monocolored decks. So I usually always run Buried Ruin in my uh, monocolored decks. Temple of the False God, it's ramp. It's it seems good. Uh, Spawning Bed, pay six to sacrifice it to make three one one colorless I'll draw these signs that can uh, sacrifice to add one mana to your mana pool. It just seems good. It's a token producer. Uh, Kirk Heap, same thing. Token producers pay one red and a colorless and tap it to make a uh, zero one red cobalt. Uh, then I got the cycle lands. I got both of them Forgotten Cave and Smoldering Crater. Man, get two encampment. It's nice to have a main land. And it's nice that it's aggressively uh, cost it so I can bring it out right away and I can get it to uh, to combat uh, to get some combat tricks on it. Uh, Dormant Volcano. Is, uh, I don't know if I really like this. I really don't like that you have to bring, uh, bring back a untapped mountain to put this out tapped. I don't like it, but I think I, I just wanted to try it. I was like, I'm, I'm just gonna. I'm not a huge fan, but you know, some some games it will it won't be it won't hurt me too much. And then I run 26 mountains, I believe. Let's see. Yep. 
26 mountains and on to my token producers let's move this in a little bit uh first one's Kadolfa rebirth um you know it's you have to cat you have to pay one you also have to sacrifice an artifact and put three one one red goblin creature tokens out onto the battlefield that's very aggressive it's really good uh and we run a ton of artifacts in here because we do run a bunch of um uh like m you know mana door creatures uh, that are artifacts, which that, you know, you sacrifice one creature, make two extra creatures, essentially, which is, is good. It's not bad. Uh, next is Krenko's Command. Uh, pay two mana for a 2-1-1 uh, red goblin. Seems fair. Dragon Fodder, same thing. Mog War Mushroom. Uh, you pay two. Uh, when it comes out, uh, you put a 1-1 red goblin out on the battlefield, too. Um, and it has Echo, uh, where if you don't pay the Echo, it sacrifices. But it's cool because whenever Mog War Marshal dies, you put another 1-1 one, one Red Goblin token creature out onto the battlefield. Uh, next, the most expensive card in my Dollar General deck is Young Pyromancer at $0.99 cents on, on TCG uh, market price. $0.99. Cents. I was absolutely astonished. When I first grabbed this card and put it into the I guess it's going to go in pile, I did not think it was going to go in. I thought it was over a dollar at the time, but it is not. Uh, so 2 mana, 2 1. Whenever you cast an instant sorcery spell, put a 1 1 red elemental creature token onto the battlefield. Uh, the only problem with this is that a lot of people can, can you know, can forget that when you copy those spells uh, from targeting Zada, uh, they're not casting. They're just uh, they're just copies of the original casted spell. So it, it won't count towards making, like you won't make a ton of 1 1s off of this unless you're playing a bunch of different uh, instant or sorcery spells at that time. It's still really good though. Uh, next is Garaper Gearcraft, 3 mana, 2-1. Uh, basically, it just puts out a 1-1 colorless Thopter token with it, with flying. Uh, PNLR does the same exact thing, except it also has, you can pay 2 to give target artifact creature fire and breathing until end of turn. Uh, and then you can pay 1, sacrifice an artifact to make target creature not able to block that turn also. So she's got she's got some options, I guess. Thopter Engineer is probably my favorite with all my mana dorks I can tap for mana, and that's 3 mana. Uh, once again, it puts out another 1-1 one, one colorless stop to artifact token with flying, but artifact creatures you control have haste, which is which is really good in this deck. Um, Hordling Outburst, 3 mana for 3 goblins. Seems fair. Goblin Slide, uh, it's a little slow, but I, I think it's solid with all the non-creature, all the instants and sorceries we have in this deck. It seems it seems really good in here. So whenever you cast a non-creature spell, well, it's 3 mana for enchantment. Whenever you cast a non-creature spell, you may pay 1. If you do, put a 1-1 one, one red goblin creature token with haste onto the battlefield. So they're also hasty goblins, which is, which is solid. Uh, next is Empty the Warrens. Um, I mean, most of the times, I think you're going to average maybe, you know, uh, 2 to 3... Uh, copies of it well not copies of the three total two to three total but there are going to be times where you can actually um, get this to a high storm count uh, which would be hilarious I never I haven't seen this card yet since I've been testing it uh, but I am excited to because I think uh, it can do nutty things in the right spot but uh, originally it's just th uh, four mana to put two all red goblin creature tokens onto the battlefield but if the storm count gets high it's it's a lot that's a lot of one ones uh, beetleback chief Four mana for a 2-2, two, two, and uh, it also puts out two 1-1 one, one red goblin creature tokens. Uh, goblin Rally, five mana for four red goblin creatures. Um, and Ember Cool Hatcher, I really love this. Uh, this is one of my, I have this in like my Prosh deck. I really, I, I liked it so much. And that's five mana for a 3-3, three, three, and it makes three zero one one colorless Eldrazi spawn creature tokens. Which they can also sacrifice to add one mana to your mana pool. And Mirror Battlesphere is kind of like after you get Wrath or something, you'll probably be holding on to this for most of the game. It's just another way to get you back on the aggro, uh, try to, you know, come back on the aggro strategy. And that's, uh, you know, you pay 7 mana for a 4-7, it creates 4 uh, one, 1 colorless mirrors. Uh, when you attack with Mirror Battlesphere, you can tap those mirrors uh, to give this creature plus X plus O for each uh, mirror you tapped. And you also deal X damage to defending players. So how many you tap, you also deal that much, that much damage to that player that you're attacking. Now on to my tokens uh, supporter cards. Uh, Impact Tremors, 2 mana whenever a creature enters the battlefield under your control. Uh, it deals 1 damage to each opponent. This early game, this could paint a target on your back, depending on you know how fast you're coming out. Um, but, I mean, it's efficient. It's a nice way to kind of get some damage in before you know doing the overrun effects to make the math a little easier. Uh, next is Ogre Battle Driver, uh, which is one of my favorite cards to put in token decks. 
Uh, it's four mana for a three three ogre warrior, of course. Uh, whenever another creature enters the battlefield under your control, that creature gains plus two plus zero oh, and haste until end of turn. So that once again, it pumps up your creatures, makes them fast. Um, so you know, the, you, once again, you can make the math a little easier. You can get a little closer to killing your opponents through overrunning them. And also, it's important you're going to be in combat a lot. You want to kill through damage. You want to be fast. You want to have Berserker's Onslaught. It's five mana for enchantment. Attacking creatures you control have double strike. That seems good when you're overrunning creatures. So we're running it. Uh, gratuitous Violence is like pseudo double strike. You, you won't get the double strike where you basically first strike a creature dead and then you know deal damage if it has trample. But it does deal. You do deal double damage to everything. Your creatures deal double damage to other creatures and players. So it seems solid. Next is Assault Strobe. Target creature gains double strike until end of turn. So you target Zana, give everything double strike until end of turn. Uh, built to smack. Now we're going into like uh, all the pump effects. Uh, uh, this is probably the worst one out of the bunch. You pay a red. It's an instant built to smash. Uh, your creatures have to be attack, uh, attacking for you to target. But target attacking creature gets plus three plus three until end of turn. If it's an artifact creature, it gains trample until end of turn. So your your like mana dorks and your uh, or, or your thopters are gonna be uh, they're gonna be tramples, which is nice because ornithopters are gonna be in the sky too, which is gonna be solid. Uh, next, Brute Force. This is just an amazing card. Like, this is not a red card. This is a green card. Uh, Brute, Brute Force, pay red. Target creature gets plus three, plus three until on the turn. So, target Zada. Everything gets plus three, plus three. Reckless Charge. Really good. Red mana. And it's a sorcery card, which is which is good for other reasons I'll get into later. Uh, later. Uh, target creature gets plus three, plus oh, and gains haste until on the turn. And you can flash it back for three. Fantastic card. Titan Strength. Uh, everything gets plus three, plus one until on the turn. Uh, and you can scry one. Well, with all the creatures that you're going to target, depending on how many creatures you have, that's how many times you're going to scry one, which is hilarious. Uh, now we're getting into our overrun effects. This is when we get to the green green side of uh, green side of the the you know the pie. You know, since this is a teamer deck, it feels like a teamer deck. Uh, but you p pay a red. It's instant. Any number of target creatures each get plus two plus zero and gain trample until on a turn. I didn't explain what strive was because you're not using strive. You're just targeting Zada. Zada will trigger you. Target everything. Rush of Adrenaline, pretty much same thing. Red, target creature gets plus two plus uh, one and gains trample until on a turn. So give everything plus two plus one and trample. Uh, Distemper of the Blood, it's sorcery. Uh, red, colorless, target creature gets plus two plus two and gains trample until on a turn. And you can madness it. So uh, we do have Faithless Looting and Cathartic Reunion that you can combo this with to get a cheaper uh, Distemper of the Blood out. Uh, but it gives everything plus two plus two and trample. Uh, brute Strength, uh, you know, red colorless instant target creature gets plus three plus one and gains trample into end turn. So everything gets plus three plus one trample. And a new card from uh, Aether Revolt, Invigorate at Rampage, two mana, choose one. Uh, don't worry about the second one, choose the first one. Uh, target creature gets plus four plus oh and gains trample into end of turn. So that's huge given everything plus four plus oh and trample. Uh, last but not least is um in the pump pump uh, setup. Balduvian Rage. This is this card's insane because uh, it comes with options. It's a uh, red and you know X uh, targeted cra attacking creature gets plus X plus O until end of turn. You have a ton of creatures. You just pump all your man into it. They all get huge. Uh, and the cool thing is, is that you draw a card at the beginning of the next uh, turn's upkeep. So you know for each creature you will do that each time. So it, it will, there'll be a stack of them on your upkeep. You just draw a ton of cards. Uh, you 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 know early game you can actually sit on this as a defensive card like if they wrath a god you know for all your creatures you can target this on Zod and target everything and just give them all plus zero plus zero until end of turn but you get to draw all those cards to try to get you back in the game to give you more gas. Uh, next is on to the little mana rocks or mana dorks we got uh, we we chose with mana dorks we wanted to go with mana dorks mainly because we do we do want to board uh, that's the whole strategy is going wide with creatures and then pumping them all up so. It seemed more efficient to go this way than just better, you know, like actual good mana rocks. Uh, we go with, and also we can't go with Soul Ring because that's over a dollar. Uh, Iron Mirror, two. Uh, tap it for a red. What's a 1 1? Hedron Grinder for two. It's a zero 1. Uh, tap to add colorless. Pilgrim's Eye, you pay three. It's a 1 1 flyer. And uh, when it enters battlefield, search your library for a base land card, put it in your hand. Opaline Unicorn, three. 1 2. Tap for any color. Alan Mirror, pretty much the same thing. Three, but it's a two-two. Uh, add one mana of any color to your mana pool. Palladium Mirror, uh, Mirror, it's a soul ring on a body. Three mana for a two-two. Tap to add two mana to your mana pool. Burnished Heart, probably my favorite ramp card. 
uh, ever, uh, just because it can go in any deck and it fills in. It's basically a, a explosive vegetations. Uh, so three mana for a 2 2, pay three, sacrifice it. Uh, grab two basic land cards in your library and put them on the battlefield tap. Our Miller Sphere, I feel like I keep putting this in mono red decks. It just seems efficient, like, because this deck only runs 34 lands, uh, very light. There are chances that you could get kind of screwed on mana, and this kind of brings you back into it. You pay two, and you also pay another two, sacrifice it to grab two lands and put them into your hand to make sure you have land drops. Battle Hymns, when we start getting to the combo thing. This is when uh, Storming starts becoming a thing where you can Storm in Goblins. Uh, Battle Hymn is pay red and colorless and add red to your mana pool for each creature you control. I mean, that number could be huge. You know, you could be, get like 10 mana, and then you could do all kinds of combat tricks and stuff and draw a ton of cards and do a ton of things and maybe even win the game through it. But these cards, they really help you either get a board presence out quick or just win the game quick. We also have Mana Geyser, which is absolutely absurd. Like, 5 mana may seem like too much, but I mean, the amount of, like, the the only time I use this, I've only used this once uh, since I've been testing this deck and I got 15 mana out of it, which is solid, <laughs> which is insane. Okay, now onto our card draw card advantage. We have Face Loot, uh, Red, Sorcery, draw 2 cards and discard 2 cards, just solid card. Uh, you can pay 3 to flash it back. Cathartic Reunion, you want this early game, not late game, but... You know, it's a singleton format, so it's great to just, you know, put this one of them. Uh, two mana, uh, discard two cards, draw three cards. Crystal Ball, you guys know me. Love the Crystal Ball. Uh, scrying two, all the time sweet. Alright, now into the blue section. This is the blue section. Uh, this is why the deck is so good, I believe. Um, it's, the, it's, it's all this at the end. It says draw a card. So let's get into it. Renegade Tactics, red. Target creature can't block this turn. Well, that's not cool, but draw a card, so we don't care what that says, pretty much. Um, it's insane, because we, we don't worry about our creatures not being able to block this turn, because it's sorcery speed. We're doing it on the turn we're attacking anyways, usually, so it doesn't matter. But we just want to draw a bunch of cards. Crimson Wisp is a little... It's 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 a lot, lot more efficient. It's a lot better. Because you pay red, and target creature becomes red, and eh, we don't care. Uh, gains haste, that's amazing. And you get to draw cards, so you get to draw a ton of cards. Draw a card for each creature, basically, it says. Expedite, target creature gains haste until end of turn, draw a card. Absolutely relevant. Seems good. Stun, once again, it's like a renegade tactics for one extra, draw a card. Uh, accelerate, once again, it's like an expedite, um, one extra. Boiling blood, we usually use this defensively because target creature attacks this turn if able. If you make all of them do it at the wrong time, it's not great. Uh, you want to make sure to do it on your second main phase or in response to a wrath spell or end of turn or whatever. Uh, so just don't use this at the wrong time. But you draw a ton of cards anyways. It's fantastic. Uh, next is my removal suite. We have Vandal Blast, which is a red. Destroy target artifact you don't control. You overload it. Destroy all artifacts you don't control. Absolutely fantastic card. Always have them in red decks. Uh, Release the Gremlins, another new card from Aether Revolt. Uh, it's a red and uh, like double X. Uh, destroy X target artifacts. Create X 2-2 two, two red gremlin creature tokens uh that seems extremely relevant what i'm trying to do so in response to destroying things i'm making my board wider so i can overrun next in the remover slide our removal is not fantastic but we're relying more on combat damage to you know just go really fast and be like hey you answer us uh outnumber you pay a red it's instant speed outnumber deals damage to target creature equal to the number of creatures you control seems relevant in a uh token stack Massive Raid, I've been waiting to put this card in, in the deck and finally found a deck to put it in. Uh, two red and one colorless. Massive Raid deals damage to target creature or player equal to the number of creatures you control. So you can use this. If you have enough tokens, you can sometimes kill a person with this card. Uh, the Veneral's Disc, I can't believe this was under a dollar. But because it was in, I think, the last Commander set, it's it's like 80 cents in that set. Uh, so four mana, it enters the battlefield tapped. You know, pay one, destroy all artifact creatures and enchantments. This does not deal with planeswalkers, but this is our budget oh schnit button, I guess. <laughs> Alright, so um now we gotta deal with the graveyard. Uh we can't use relic of progenitus, so we're using Tormod script. Eh, seems good. It's something. Uh because we can't use relic, uh and I'm also kind of metagating against my my friend that's building a um Mirko Vosk desk, I thought it would be good to uh put Elixir of Immortality in there. Uh, pay one, pay two, you gain five life, shuffle this, and your graveyard into your library so I don't get milled out. We also want to protect our Mirror Wing and our Zada, so we have Mask of Abyssin and Swiftfoot Boots for Hexproof, and this one also gives haste, which is sweet. Uh, also in our protection package, we have Otherworldly Outburst. 
Uh, target creature gets one on a turn, so you can use it to pump everything to get in there for bashes. But I usually use it to like a wrath with a wrath effect. If they're about to wrath all my creatures, I target this on Zada, target everything. Uh, when they all get destroyed, I get uh, to replace those tokens in Zada with three two colorless Eldrazi uh, horror token. So I get a, you know, they wrath the battlefield. I get about uh, my battlefield back out basically, most of the time bigger. Uh, Anarchist is our recursion section. Uh, five mana for a 2-2, and when it comes into play, you may uh, return target sorcery card from your graveyard to your hand. I know it's weird just bringing back just sorcery, but I look through this deck, and like pretty much you can have a sorcery for everything. I think like removal, uh, draw, um, you know, pump up, give haste, pump up, give trample. I, there's there's a sorcery version for everything, so it's a, it's it's essentially a regrowth. Volcanic Vision, however, does more than just a regrowth, and it gets you instant or sorcery card for seven mana. But it deals damage equal to the card's converted mana cost to each creature your opponent's control. So it's like a pyroclasm that doesn't target you, uh, which is insane. You know, I mean, sometimes it's a little worse than that. Sometimes it's electricery, but uh, we have to get back relevant stuff. Uh, Dual Caster Mage is just awesome that you can uh, you can double the the spells that you're putting that you're targeting uh, Zada with. But it also is uh, a combo piece uh, to make an infinite combo with these cards. Uh, Twin Flame and Heat Shimmers are pretty much the same thing. They're Sorcery Speed also, so you can grab back combo piece with Anarchist. Um, but they do the same thing. They put a token into the play that's a copy of Tired Creature. It has haste. At the end of your turn, remove this permanent from the game. So you exile at the end. End step. Um, so this card you target Zada with, of course, and you target everything with. And it makes a copy of everything. So you can double your battlefield. Uh, minus the extra Zada, of course, because it's sacrificed to the legendary roll, um, and just get in for win with like pumps and stuff, and basically overrun it. Or you can just dual when you cast Twin Flame or Heat Shimmer on. Uh, so you can use either one of these. Uh, target Zada uh, before the spell resolves. Flash and Dual Caster Mage. Dual Caster Mage will copy either Twin Flame or Heat Shimmer, whichever one you're casting. Uh, so then on the stack, the first one will resolve. So it will put down another dual caster mage. Dual caster will trigger again the, the token copy, and that will target the um, the other spell that hasn't resolved yet. So you'll do that over and over again, making infinite dual caster mages and infinite whatever else is on the battlefield. So yeah. So this is this was a dollar general, and it does have an infinite combo in it for being just a dollar general. Um, this card, I mean this this deck, I looked it up on TCG. Uh, a TCG player will sell this deck to you, I believe, for $25, and I built it online for $10, which is absolutely absurd. Like, you have, buy pre-cons for $30. This is a lot more competitive than a pre-con. Like, this deck can actually go toe-to-toe -to -toe with really good decks, too. It seems solid. Um, so, yeah, if you guys are on a budget, if you guys don't want to do the dollar, the dollar general theme deck, uh, this is just a solid this is just a solid deck to build, period. And if you guys want to optimize it, you guys can put cards like, of course, Soul Ring, Skull Clamp, uh, Sword of the Animus, um, you know, Perilous Vault, Oblivion Stone, all that stuff. Fill it in with the good stuff if you need to. Um, but this deck is very great. This deck is very synergistic, though. Without Zada or Mirror Wing, it does nothing, really. Um, so you got to make sure to protect your general, make sure he comes out the right time. But this deck is fast this deck is really fast and it's a lot of fun uh i will have a link in the description below um to the actual deck list and yeah guys just let me know what you think of zada uh let me know if you got decks similar to it or if you would be interested in building a dollar general uh just let me know what you think of the uh the themed uh the theme deck so yeah take it easy guys bye bye